Is Tesla going bankrupt? This is a question I've actually got a lot of recently. Um, and it's kind of, <laughs> this is hilarious. Elon actually had this giant tweet uh, stream, if you guys haven't seen it, April Fool's joke, of course. Um, you know, despite intense efforts to raise money, including including last ditch mass sale of Easter eggs, we are sad to report that Tesla has gone completely and totally bankrupt. So bankrupt, you can't believe it. That's kind of like a shot at, at Trump, I guess, right? Um, and then there's this photo here, you know, Elon was found passed out against a Model 3 surrounded by Tesla Kila bottles, the tracks of dried tears still visible on his cheeks. Bravo to Elon for having a great sense of humor and uh, and and <laughs> posting this. Gives me a renewed sense after that kind of act of hubris a, a couple weeks ago with the Facebook thing. Uh, but let's just talk about this uh, r real quickly in all seriousness because um, they definitely are in, in a squeeze right now financially. You know, maybe they're at the brink. Um, but going bankrupt isn't really something that I, I see possible for their future, and I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, the the key is what is is how fast they can produce Model Threes. Um, so here you have their Model Three tracker from Bloomberg. Now these guys, they're, they're I mean, it's a bit slow to respond, and Tom and these guys have done a great job here. Uh, you can see that that there was a dip where they actually shut down production, which which was first spotted here and then tesla confirmed and then so this is i think a pretty great way to look at it uh i don't know uh how far out when they have these next um these trends here i'm not really how far out that is maybe a week maybe two weeks and i'm not quite sure how they're actually uh the, how they're doing um doubling production here in a week or two it doesn't make any sense to me but um elon did just recently report that or in an email to employees that, that they're hitting uh, 2,000 Model 3s per week. Now, we don't have a date yet, or let me just double check. I don't think we have a date yet for the next um, uh, Q1 reporting, but usually it's pretty soon, and often, you know, within a day or two after the quarter ends, we get an update letter, which uh, we, we don't have yet. You can see here um, only the, the Q4 results. So, uh, very soon, we'll have more details on that. But this report from uh, Jalopnik here showing that Elon sent an email stating that they were making 2,000 Model 3s per week is great news. And basically, that should be the end of the discussion when it comes to them going bankrupt. But just to kind of put uh, so, some some kind of a logic behind it and how it works. There's a great video here by The Rest of Us, which is a fantastic YouTube channel you should check out. Uh, really uh, great job explaining concepts like this. And um, in the video, he, he kind of talks about a company being able to, ha there are three kind of uh, pipes that, that keep a company operating. And uh, the idea is that um, losing money is fine as long as you have money in the bank, as long as you have cash on hand. Um, once you have cash, once you run out of cash on hand is when the company dies. Um, this is a very, very well done video. I'll put the link down there. But there are three kind of pipes here, operations, investing, and financing. Operations is essentially the money you make or lose on, um, on your actual product. Uh, in this case, you know, to Tesla cars, um, energy, et cetera. Then you have your investments. Um, the, the, and this one notably is the Gigafactory, uh, as well as, you know, other factories potentially or, or other build outs, cost of materials, those kind of things. Then you have the third one, which is your financing. And so this is, you know, stocks, the money you make off of uh, um, going public is a big is a big event. And then also like they, they just did the bonds. They started selling those um, a couple months ago. Um, and then also, you know, you can just uh, get uh, and raise a new round of capital, which dilutes your shares and all that. Uh, my friend Galley has a great channel called Hyperchange TV also where he um, goes kind of in depth and all that stuff. He kind of has a great background in finance. So uh, I'll link to his channel as well to dig into that. So the point being um, that as long as their cash reserves aren't completely depleted, then they will survive. And uh, they've been able to survive basically by continuing to get you know, f better rounds of financing and things like raising money through the bonds and all that. So um, those are coming uh, kind of short, I think, and they might need more cash, which means that they probably would end up diluting shares. But the real pinch, the real problem about this pipe here, this financing one, 
is that Moody's recently downgraded them. And so that makes financing harder to get because then you have to pay higher interest on it. And so that, that really, really hurts. Now, the key point though, is that if they can get the Model 3 ramp up fast enough, then that operations one will start to generate money. Um, and as soon as that happens, all of the other problems will kind of resolve themselves because cash is kind of the, the, the air that they need to breathe. And my opinion is that the, the investment, the, the, the companies, the firms, and, and, and the individual investors that have financed Tesla to this point are so deep that they're past the point of no return, that they could not and will not let Tesla fail because that would you know, be, be detrimental to their own investments. Um, and they're so deep into it that I don't think that this financing pipe is going to run out. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, you know, th there's obviously more going on here, but that is, that is my view of it. Um, as we hear more and more good things about the Model 3 ramp and, and, and them making that, I, I think that a lot of these discussions are, are, are gonna kind of die away. But uh, if you wanna know more, I'll put a link to this video, which again, I think it does a really great job explaining it, as well as, as my friend Galley's channel um, called HyperChange TV, um, which has uh, some really good thoughts and analysis on this. All right, and with that, the Model 3 was actually named the Automotive uh, Car of the Year by Popular Mechanics. Imagine that. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, a nice little cherry on top here from, from all, all the, the stuff we've talked about today. The Car of the Year. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty big honor. I definitely think they deserve it. it this car is a game changer. Um, it's really gonna gonna um, help us, you know, achieve the kind of uh, mass market adoption of electric vehicles. Even though it is pretty expensive, of course, I think it's gonna change the the the, the shift people's perception of EVs as the model uh, as the Roadster originally did, and then the Model S did, and X, and all that. So I think we're still it's a catalyst. Uh, it may not be the hot, most selling EV ever of all time. It probably will be in the short term, but then in the long term, I definitely could see some, a Honda or Toyota or somebody else coming out with a truly, you know, seventeen thousand dollar EV that is great um, and still worth buying, and then that becomes the one. So, you know, kudos to Tesla again for uh, for this award. I think it's it's well deserved. Um, and with that, let's hop over to Q and A.